Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Hi, everybody. My name is Danielle Culp. I'm a project planner with the region of Durham. Part of my role is helping to create policies and implement uh, various active transportation projects throughout the region. So today we're going to shift gears from moving goods to moving people. I want to start off uh, just by playing a quick video. And why I'm going to play this video is really to share with you the value that cycling provides as shown through the eyes of a family in Durham. So as you just learned from Ian and his two girls, we as planners and practitioners have the power and ability to create a high quality experience when it comes to connecting people from point A to point B. We do this through our policies and our plans but you can't ride a piece of paper. It's really important that we bring these policies to life uh, and fruition on the ground. And part of that requires having a roadmap for implementation. And today I'm gonna share with you some of the lessons we're learning along the way in Durham and the solutions we're employing when it comes to active transportation, policy and infrastructure projects. So just a quick snapshot, I know you uh, heard earlier today a little bit about our region. We've got about 2,500 square kilometers um, in terms of our landscape. And when you look at that map on the left, you can see we're bigger than York and Toronto combined when you put it all together. We're a two-tier municipality with eight different area municipalities in the mix consisting of rural, urban, and suburban uh, neighborhoods. And part of that means that we really need to balance a lot of different needs uh, when we're planning and implementing active transportation infrastructure. We're really focused on a lot of different projects, but I wanna highlight three here uh, today. The first is our regional cycling plan. So this is our long-term uh, strategic plan, and it's really focused on guiding the development of the cycling network. We also have our e-scooter bylaw, uh, as you heard in our previous panel. Uh, the first and last kilometer is a really big challenge and e-scooters and e-bikes are great ways for us to help fill that gap. And that's why we're focused on providing new trends when it comes to technology and transportation options. And then the third I wanna highlight is our active transportation strategies. It's great to have a network. It's great to have different components, but if people don't have places where they can lock their bike or rest along the way, we're not fully thinking of everyone and their full journey. But today I'll be focusing on our regional cycling plan and I'll provide you a quick overview about the plan and what we're setting out to achieve. So the regional cycling plan is an update. We had an original plan started in 2012 and in 2021, uh, we approved our new updated plan that's really focused on improving coordination, enhancing facilities, and expanding our cycling connections between and within our municipalities. Over the next 20 years, we plan to provide over 1,000 kilometers of our primary cycling network, so different routes for people to get from A to B. 217 kilometers are all new. They weren't previously proposed or planned projects. Um, and a variety of facilities, everything from paved shoulders all the way through to cycle tracks to really ensure that our network is accommodating different experiences and levels um, of cycling uh, familiarity. But as you can see on the map on the right hand side, there's a lot of lines on those map or on the map, and that takes a lot of coordination and a very clear plan in order to take that from what's on the page and put it into practice. The plan identifies two key phases in order for us to achieve the implementation. So the first phase is the short term focused within the first 10 years. And then the second phase, which is all about the longer term projects beyond the 10 years. And it's great that we have this general overview of 
timeline and what we're working towards, but we need more details in order to take that plan from policy and put it into practice. So we have a lot of different tools and objectives and actions that are identified through the plan. But as I just mentioned, it's a high level planning document. It's not meant to be a blueprint, but our job now and what we're tasked with doing is taking it from that plan and then creating a blueprint for implementation so that we're actually able to achieve and document the progress that we're making when it comes to implementing and achieving those targets that we've set out. So I want to highlight a few challenges that we face and then some of the things we're doing to help mitigate that. So the first is coordination. We're a two-tier municipality. We have a lot of different partners that we work with in order to implement our network and the various components and actions. However, that requires a lot of coordination. It involves a lot of different people along the way and at different junctures. And one thing we noticed through our previous plan is that there was a lack of consistent touch points with key stakeholders and staff, which made it more challenging to progress on the actions within the time frame allotted. And it wasn't always clear uh, how and uh, why we would assess and report on the progress. So sometimes that could result in missed opportunities to accelerate the implementation. And so what we've tried to do through this new plan is dedicate specific staff to help with the coordination. So it's their role to help coordinate between different stakeholders, ensure we're meeting consistently, um, and report back on how we're working together to achieve the outcomes in the plan. Next is monitoring. So we found that through the 2012 regional cycling plan, we weren't always consistent with what we were monitoring. We also weren't tracking or um, relying on the policy targets, which are often really broad. They're not always super focused. And we were noticing that gap between the policy and the implementation, which really prevented us from accelerating further. So in order to help reduce these challenges that we were facing when it came to clear targets, we're establishing more granular KPIs. So getting really focused from the onset before we go to implementation, what do we want to track? How often do we want to track? Not everything needs to be tracked in the same interval. And we learned that firsthand through the previous plan. But we're also trying to create a more streamlined system of reporting. As I mentioned through the coordination piece, a lot of different people touch this project and we're not always sharing the data in the same way with the same people and giving the same access, which can make it really hard when it comes to tracking the progress we are making. Next is funding. I think we all have faced this problem, depending, no matter what project we're working on. Um, in the past, cycling infrastructure was folded into our roads projects. And that's great, it's being accounted for, but when it came to reporting and monitoring, it often got kind of lost in the details. And so something that we really tried to bring to the forefront through uh, this new plan is by creating a specific budget line item. So it has its own budget line item separate from roads, even though we will work in tandem with one another to implement uh, projects in a coordinated manner. The other thing we're doing is grant funding. There's a lot of money on the table and we weren't consistently going after it. Now through these dedicated positions, we're able to work that into our schedules and make sure that there are specific staff that will seek those opportunities, apply for the funding. Um, and it's helping us get more money to stretch us further and accelerate the implementation. And then lastly, reporting. So, in the past, we reported, as we all do. However, it was really internally focused. And the challenge with that is we weren't able to share with the public in the same digestible manner what we're doing, the progress that we're making in that consistent uh, and easy to access way. So what we're doing through the new plan is we're creating more like a report card. It's still a report. It still goes to council. It's still... Uh, touches internal staff, so we're all aware of what we're achieving, but 
it goes beyond that. It's in a format that people can understand and really see how we're progressing. Are we on track? Um, and where do we need to try and accelerate or move things up to help bring people along from a transparency perspective of what we're actually doing with taxpayer dollars? The other thing is also getting innovative with some of the tools uh, that we have. So beyond just reporting through you know, a report card, we're also looking at our mapping and tools that people can use you know, through what people mentioned earlier, your cell phones, your tablets, other ways you're receiving information. So you can also see the progress. It helps us track. It helps you as the public understand uh, and see how our network is expanding and growing um, and that distribution. So now I want to shift into some of the tools uh, that we're using to really help put this into perspective and practice. So the first is data collection. And this is really focused on tracking and monitoring uh, our utilization. How well is our network that we're building and we're spending all this money on being used? And what is the travel behavior like? How many people are we seeing ride uh, these various routes? And one of the ways we do this is through cycling counts. We have 290 locations that we track movement of people on bikes. And that really helps us report and see where are we seeing increased demand. There may be a facility there, but it means that it's going to come up for maintenance and that can help us with prioritization. The next is funding. So having a variety of streams or mechanisms to help ensure that we have dedicated funding committed not just to the infrastructure or hard infrastructure, I should say, but also the programmatic components, the amenities, that's really important. And one thing we have already done is applied for grants. So that'll supplement the money we've already earmarked for implementation of network components. And now we can also accelerate things like our cycling strategies. So we now have received $100,000 to help advance our wayfinding and signage strategy that was recommended in the plan, as well as our bicycle parking uh, strategy as well. Uh, the third is innovative amenities and mapping. So making sure that we have high quality, supportive amenities is really important to complement the network. You can have all the bike lanes in the world to get people from A to B, but if they have nowhere to park their bike at the end of the day, they're not going to use it where it will be more for recreational use. And we're really about all trip types through this plan. Um, and one thing we've been tracking and pushing for more uh, rollout for is bike racks. Uh, by the end of this year, we'll have 161 installed. And this is something that we can integrate into the mapping and monitoring component so that people can see uh, through one tool, the progress we're making, but also when they're planning their trips, they know a bike rack is going to be there and available for me when I decide to go to the grocery store to run my errand by bike. And then uh, reporting. So as mentioned before, it's really important that we have different tools and consistent ways of delivering the information and sharing the progress along the way uh, from a transparency perspective. Uh, one thing that we are tracking through KPIs, like many others, is the number of kilometers that we're implementing. Um, so here I've shown 217, so that's where we are working towards over the next 10 years. Uh, but other things that we're doing to get more granular is we're comprised of eight different municipalities, as I previously mentioned. Figuring out that distribution and sharing that is would be getting 80% or 20%. Where are we at in, in terms of completion and that equitable bit? equitable distribution. Not everyone's going to start and end in one community. We want to make sure that this helps connect people not only within but between their communities. And now just some key takeaways. Uh, so the first is really making sure you get a solid foundation. Understand where you're starting from and this will help you identify any gaps in the process early on. Gaps and challenges will always occur but the clearer picture you have from the onset, the easier you uh, can make a better implementation plan and ensure you're progressing uh, and meeting the targets at an appropriate rate. Uh, also, creating a central reporting system and place where you can access the information. We have so many different people that touch these projects. It's important that it's accessible to everybody. We're tracking the same things and we're speaking the same language. 
I may refer to something in one way and somebody else says it in a different way. We need to make sure we communicate that in the same way so people have the information they need to actually advance the tasks and it doesn't create any bottlenecks or delays in the process. And also new tools. So this doesn't necessarily mean new uh, to you or your organization, but perhaps you haven't used it in your department. There might be tools, you know, even today we saw Rover, really neat. That's something that Durham's involved in. However, it's not in my department yet. And it's a way that we can see what are other people doing? What are they, what tools are they using? And how can we tap into that to help monitor and track um, and collect information that we can then demonstrate that progress from an implementation perspective. And then lastly, dedicated staff. You don't always need to create a new position, but having people available and committed really helps you accelerate the process and achieve the outcomes in a timely manner. So I'm gonna leave you with one more video. And this is really to showcase and tie it all together that you know the value that cycling provides and why we need to continue to plan, design and implement active transportation projects. All right, and that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your time and listening. If you'd like to get in touch, my email is up there um, and feel free to check out our cycling plan. The link is included below. Thank you.